So we are going to be creating a stop motion animation. So some of the things that you are going to need are backdrop and setting. I'm going to be using a rolled out piece of paper. You can also use um, literally just the wall and the floor. You can use the kitchen counter at where it meets the wall. Check. All right. Um, lighting. That's another key component. I've got these studio lights on either side of where I'm at because I do a lot of my own photography when I make my 3D stuff so I've got those set up already. You want your animation to be well lit and it doesn't need to be extremely bright it just needs to be consistent. I've got kind of the sort of best situation what I would recommend either go out in the middle of the day and do something outside in bright light where you know you're gonna ha actually have that time to set aside or um, I don't know another option would just be go in a room where no one's gonna disturb you the light is gonna stay the same constantly all right cool lighting great tripod or stabilization um, best case scenario is that you have got a tripod to hold your device. Now I've got one of these but I'm actually not going to be using the tripod for my phone today because I'm going to be showing you how to create a stabilization tool using simple materials like cardboard and scissors or a utility knife or something that you can use safely and easily if you don't already have a tripod for your phone. Alright, this is my other option. Okay, so this is something that if you don't want to use some random object that might fall over on you or it might just be getting in the way and you want to have your phone close to the ground anyways, uh, this option might work a little bit better for you. So I'm just going to show you kind of the um, very, very simplified version of a phone or camera or device holder so that you don't have to worry about it moving around and it's lightweight enough that if you actually do want to move your camera, you can. So I'm going to set my camera off to the side for a minute. And... Belle, what are you doing? Calm down. I'll set that off to the side, and I'm going to, using the straight edge for the cardboard that I've already got, let me just draw maybe a triangle. But that triangle is about the height of my phone, or the width of my phone, in height. It's going to have kind of a wide section at the top, and it's going to come back down. The wider the base, the more supportive this thing is going to be. So if you want to make it even wider, if you've got enough cardboard to do that, that would be great. All right. Now another thing you're going to want to figure out later is what angle you want your phone to be at. But first, we're going to cut out this triangle. Use whatever tools you have on hand or whatever you feel comfortable with. If you feel like using scissors, awesome. If you have another tool like a utility knife, um, also awesome. I like utility knives because I know how to use them and I'm not going to hurt myself. Okay, so I'm going to trace that. And you guys can see I'm using a cutting board underneath the knife so that I don't make anybody want to kill me by ruining a countertop. So I've got both of those and now we're great. Okay, so they both match. They're wonderful. I'm not actually ready to set that to the side yet, but what I want to do is figure out what angle I want my phone to sit at. So you can kind of figure out where it is on these little pieces here and you could push it forward right up to that corner there and I kind of established this angle. And what you're going to do is simply cut out whatever the shape of your phone is. You can actually take your phone and just trace it right on there. But I've got a pretty good eye for how wide my phone is. I've got one of them done and I can take that and I can test it. And look at that. I've got something that's almost holding up my phone. So I'm going to do the same thing and the other one. Let me get this out of the way now. Let me put my little subject back in its place. You might be able to simply use 
this as it is. Oh, and there he is. Is that zoomed in at all? There we go. It's definitely going to hold it steady because it's, I don't know, it's, it's a pretty good structure. I might just keep this one. Yeah, that's good. All right. Okay. Everybody good? And like I said, if you need to, you can always take a little piece of tape or a couple pieces of tape and just tape it onto your phone just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Alright, we're back to our list. Now we've got the tripod stabilization. I'm going to give that a double check. Now we're on to characters. Now, your characters, I've already got all these little funny guys that I make on my free time. Huh, free time, what is that? But I've got these little penguin guys. I've been using the first one as our little model to be our test guy, but that's what I'm actually going to be using for my little animation is I've got a couple of these little guys that are, oh, get back here that are going to be coming in and doing something. And then I've got some other little props that we are probably going to be able to play with. If maybe I, oh, maybe I am going to need a higher angle. We'll see. I'll just put him back further. Or, oh, look at that. Maybe I'll just limit it to these guys. Okay. See, this is why we need to consider all of those things before we start recording. All right. So we've got my little characters and I am going to insist that you have at least three characters. Okay, at least three. Now you can have three, you can have four, you can have five, you can have 15. You can have as many as you want as long as there are no less than three. Excuse my purple fingers, I did something today. All right, so you need characters. Now your characters can be little figures that represent a little lifelike thing, like my little penguins do, or they can be something as simple as the objects that you find around your house. Like, you can have a pen, a pair of scissors, and the utility knife be your characters. So you need to figure out what your characters are going to be. We just need three of them. They need to be unique in some way. Um, and that's pretty much it. It's your choice. It's up to you guys. Characters. Alright, you need to figure out what your story is going to be before you get started. I don't want you to just roll your thing onto the set and then sit there for 30 minutes. Oh, what do I do? Um, so kind of figure out what your story is going to be. I want you to create like a little storyboard. Okay, first frame could be my intro card. Your storyboard doesn't have to be complex again it just needs to show that you have an idea of what you might want to do okay story check all right and last but not least this is something that is very important is you need a stop motion app you can't just take the amount of pictures that I'm gonna tell you that's gonna blow your mind um, just on your phone in your camera roll you can't do that. It's going to take up way too much energy. So what you're going to do is go to your app store and you're going to find this app. It is called, it's called Stop Motion Studio, but it looks like that. Okay. So Stop Motion Studio is the main app that I use. I've used a couple others, but I don't ever remember what they're called. Um, because I always go back to Stop Motion Studio. So you're going to get that one, get this app, go into the app. What you're going to do first is you're going to, let's go back to the beginning. You're going to create a new movie. In that new movie, you have all of these cool different settings. Look at this, it's giving you instructions. And there, I think there are some little demos of how to do these. Tap here to add some pictures. That's what you're gonna do first. So you're gonna set it up like you have and in the position that you want on your little base that you have created. And what I would recommend doing, where is it? Oh, that's actually okay. This little bar on the side here, let me show you. This is your onion skin, all right? The onion skin is this magical thing that everyone is gonna end up loving, but it's a little scroll bar, you see that? 
Um, I think this is half and half. This is no onion skin. So what that means is when you take a photo and you start your actual recording process. Now this isn't how I'm going to start, but I'm just going to show you, for example. You take a photo. You don't see anything different there, right? All right, now if you scroll down and you do half, do that halfway mark, I think this is how it works. And where's my hand? Oh, no, we're right in the middle. I can't see anything. Oh, here we go. All right, so now look at that. I'm holding this penguin, holding it hostage. What I've done is I've removed one of the things, but you can still see kind of that little outline of the penguin still there if you put it halfway between, I guess, this one here and all the way up there. That's really helpful because it'll show us how much to actually move our characters, how much we have moved them, and then if we accidentally knock them all out of place, oh no, I can put them back where they belong. Okay, so that's great. So what I want to do is turn him back into the right position here. Ta, da. Um, what I want to do is maybe have one penguin take a step over. And see how I'm just moving him a little bit, and every time I do that, it's going to put it back into place, because now our onion skin setting has shifted slightly. I'm going to put him right there, and I'm just going to make tiny little motions of my penguin. And then maybe those two also get the idea. It's time to go, guys. Make sure he's out of the frame too. All right, so now we've got all of those out of the frame. The mushroom's still there. That's okay. I'm gonna take a couple extra frames to give us some sort of wait time at the end. I should have probably done that at the beginning too. But this isn't my actual film. This is just me playing with the app and figuring it out. So you can see if you look real close in that bottom corner there, it says 28 out of, it should say 28. So it says 28 out of 28. That's how many pictures I've already taken. That is nowhere near enough pictures. Because what I'm gonna say that you have to do for this animation that you guys are going to turn in for a grade is take. Are you ready? I'm going to write these down too, guys. Let me just check that off my list. Talked about stop motion app, and I'll put those in the description below too. All right, requirements. Okay, so we've got our camera back. My phone is dying, so I'm going to make this real quick. After you finish taking your pictures, and it looks like I accidentally took an extra one, so I have 29 instead of the 28, you're going to go hit this little arrow right there, back, and that'll give you the screen where you can go into the editing mode. Look at that! Look at that moving around like that. If I forgot to do something in this area, like, oh my gosh, I forgot to do the intro card. What am I gonna do now? Go into your picture taking mode again, and I think this is how it's gonna work. Let's say three sneaky penguins. Three sneaky penguins. I'm gonna make sure that my entire phone can see it. I can hold this above, and I'm going to take, let's say, 10 photos of three sneaky penguins. Now that's there, let me see if it actually went into the right place, and it didn't. So, what we can do, I think, I can show you how to do this if I remember how to do it. Three sneaky penguins. So I can take that. And I can take it, let's see select and let's see this little symbol that says select there you can select multiple oh wait no oh wait no go in that direction and then that's all of them that i want to select now i'm going to hold on that or i'm going to poke it again and i'm going to you know what happens when you cut is what it does is it gets rid of it but it also copies it so i'm going to cut those cut them out i'm going to go back to the beginning and I am going to paste. And there they are, right at the beginning now. Ooh, three sneaky penguins. All right, 
You can do the same thing with an end card. What did I do here? Okay, so I know that I don't want something. I'm gonna do the same thing with an end card. I can actually animate the end. So I'm gonna go back into my picture taking mode. This guy, not there anymore. Photo, photo, photo. <laughs> or is it? Dun, dun, dun. Okay, look at that. Do you see the ridiculousness of this? I have 60 photos right now. 60! Oh, you guys. All right, so let's see. Do I have everything? Not really, but I'm gonna show you anyways. Okay, so I've got my intro. Let me just play it and see how it looks. Oh, that's so fast. Look at that, it's so fast. It's a less than three second video. They're going so fast, so I need to change that. So this is how you change the frames per second. Right now, you can see this little scroll bar right there. It is set at 24 frames per second. So I'm just gonna slide that over. I said that I want about 12 is a good number. Um, 10 just makes it look choppy. I'm gonna show you a bad example. I'm gonna go five. If you make it go too slow, it's not going to give you a smooth video. Okay, you can speed it right back up to the beginning. I'm gonna hit play. See, it's just, ugh. We are in the age of impatience, which means that this is just grueling. Okay, it also looks really shaky. All right, so we don't want that. So let me bring it back up to 12. Again, it's this little, I'm gonna go back out, done. It's that little gear right there. That's our settings bar. That's gonna show you where to do a lot of different things. All right, I'm gonna go up to 12 frames per second. Let's see, FPS, 12 frames per second. And it'll actually show you what the time frame is gonna be. So my 60 frames per second, Divide 60 by 12, it'll give you five seconds, okay? So hit done, I'm gonna check it again. The end, that's already looking a little bit better. See, it's enough time to read it. Ooh, smooth action. And then, oh, look at that, that's nice. Okay, so I'm good with that. Now, if you ended up accidentally having your hand in the middle of a picture or something, same thing that I did when I wanted to copy or cut and paste the things in, let's say, I didn't want this many pictures of the mushroom at the end. Or this last picture is just a picture of, you see that? A picture of nothing, okay? Just hold down on that picture or tap the picture. It'll pop up with all these options. Poke. And I can take that and delete. And now it's gone. So we've got the intro. We've got the actual scene, whatever's happening in there, and we've got the end card and the exit. Okay, so everything is there. Now, there's not a lot going on in the middle, and that's what I want you to um, elaborate on in your own way. So now, what we're gonna be doing is hit this little back arrow there, and that's gonna exit to our main screen. And what you're gonna wanna do is, I think, Yep, see, hold down on the film that you just made. See, I've got a couple things going on. And what you're gonna do is export. And you're gonna export movie. Okay. Let's save it to your phone. Save video. So now I can go back. And let's just see. Mm. Sneaky penguin. Now it's on my phone as a video instead of whatever it was before. Okay, now we can take that and export it somewhere else. Like save it to your Google Drive or save it into an assignment or go into Schoology like I'm gonna have you guys do and save it 
to the format that you should be turning it in. Okay? However you're going to do it. Okie dokie. And I still have the same amount of options. Okay? Alright. There you go. There you have it. Thanks, guys.